Over the past year and a half, in reading the biographical memoirs of St. John Bosco in 20 volumes, I've come across many occasions which show that God gave him a certain amount of power over life and death, always subject to the divine will, of course. I want to tell you about some of these mind-blowing events in today's episode, and most importantly, recount the two times that St. John Bosco raised people from the dead. Up to now, I thought he only resurrected one boy named Charles, but to my great astonishment yesterday, I found a second case in the biographical memoirs. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I would first like to recount a few miracles that didn't quite play out the way you'd imagine because Don Bosco was always dependent on the will of God. Countess Soranzo left a written account of an incident like this that occurred during Don Bosco's stay in Florence. She wrote, In the home of my grandmother, there was a lady of 25, Caroline Sorelli, who for years had been bedridden because of a spine ailment and a shriveled leg. Don Bosco commanded her to walk about the house and to eat. She did so without any difficulty. He then asked whether she wished to remain cured or would rather return to her illness. After a moment's reflection, she replied that she believed it was God's will that she should continue to suffer. Immediately, she felt the need to go back to her bed, from which she never rose again. This next incident is symbolic of how much God wishes to hear our prayers. He wants to give us what we seek, but sometimes we're not bold enough to ask. A man by the name of Joseph Brogio left an account of it. He wrote, When Don Bosco was writing the life of Blessed Mary of the Angels or other saints, he often spent a few hours in my home in order to work undisturbed. Then before leaving, he would linger to chat with me. One day, my wife took him to see one of our daughters, who was ill, and asked him to bless her. Get up, he told the girl, taking her by the hand. At that moment, I wasn't really aware of what Don Bosco had in mind. She can't, I broke in. She's sick. Well then, Don Bosco replied, if that's the case, we shall send her to heaven. He blessed her and said a prayer. After he had left, my wife chided me. Didn't you see that Don Bosco wanted to cure her? As a matter of fact, Don Bosco did know that the child had been sick for a long time. Why would he take her by the hand and command her to get up, if not because he wanted to cure her? I waited for Don Bosco to visit us again, but he was out of town. Shortly afterward, my dear child went to heaven. We didn't repeat the mistake with my other daughter, who's still living. When she was practically at death's door, Don Bosco brought her back to health. So ended Joseph's testimony. I've only come across two times in which Don Bosco raised someone from the dead. In one of his sermons, he spoke about sincerity and confession and vividly described the anguish of Charles. He was a 15-year-old boy who laid at death's door. He called for Don Bosco, but the saint wasn't able to make it in time. Another priest heard his confession, and he died. When Don Bosco returned to Turin, he immediately went to see the boy. When told that he was dead, Don Bosco insisted it was just a misunderstanding. After a moment of prayer by the dead child at the wake, Don Bosco suddenly cried out, Charles, get up. To everyone's astonishment, the boy stirred, opened his eyes, and sat up. Seeing Don Bosco, his eyes danced. Father, I should be in hell now, the boy gasped. Two weeks ago, I was with a bad companion who led me into sin. At my last confession, I was afraid to tell everything. Oh, I've just come out of a horrible dream. I dreamt I was standing on the edge of a fiery pit surrounded by devils. They were about to throw me in when a beautiful lady appeared and stopped them. There's still hope for you, Charles, she told me. You haven't been judged yet. At that moment, I heard you calling me. Oh, Don Bosco, what a joy to see you again. Will you please hear my confession? After hearing the boy's confession, Don Bosco asked, Charles, now that the gates of heaven are open for you, would you rather go there or stay here with us? The boy looked away, his eyes welling up with tears. A hush fell over the room. Don Bosco, he finally said, I'd rather go to heaven. The mourners watched in amazement as Charles leaned back on the pillows, closed his eyes, 
and peacefully passed away. Our saint was so overcome with emotion that when he ended his narrative about Charles, he broke into tears and sobs and was unable to go on with his sermon. All the boys were dumbfounded, and quite some time elapsed before the service could continue. That resurrection was the first of two which I have found thus far in Don Bosco's memoirs. The second resurrection took place in Florence in the year of our Lord, 1866, and has been attested in the diocesan process for Don Bosco's beatification and canonization. Marchioness Ugoccioni deeply loved her very young godson, who had suddenly fallen victim to a grave illness and was dying. Messengers were at once dispatched all over town to find Don Bosco, who was then visiting a boarding school of the Somashi Fathers. As the superiors were escorting him through the building, the marchioness herself arrived, disheveled and plainly dressed, screaming that her godson was dead and begging Don Bosco to bring him back to life. The priests were astounded at seeing her so upset, and they feared for her sanity as she kept begging Don Bosco to go with her. He obliged. The young boy was lying on a bed, still ashen, glassy-eyed, and clearly dead. After inviting all the bystanders to pray to Mary Help of Christians, Don Bosco gave his blessing to the lifeless little body. He had scarcely finished when the little boy began to breathe, yawned, and again conscious, smiled at his mother. He fully recovered within a short time. Deeply grateful, the Marchioness became such a generous benefactress of Don Bosco that his Salesians began calling her our good mama in Florence. Once in 1887, during Don Bosco's last visit to Florence, the Marchioness at dinner described at length her godson's return to life through Don Bosco's blessing. Lowering his head, Don Bosco blushed and kept silent. The better to confirm this incredible occurrence, the Salesians themselves questioned Don Bosco in his last years. He fully confirmed the fact and all its particulars as described above, but then, after a short pause, he added with an expression of profound humility, perhaps he wasn't dead. We couldn't expect a more explicit assurance in the veracity of his sanctity. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you'd like to hear about even more miracles that Don Bosco performed, just click on the playlist above me here. God bless you and Our Lady keep you. Ready to go?